This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so we'll record the session for the folks who are not able to join and they can review this off, later offline. Okay, um, so you guys can see my screen, right? Guys, please respond. Okay, am I audible to you guys? This conference will now be recorded. So, uh, guys, the agenda of this meeting, uh, this training is very simple. Just to share the knowledge, what I know, what I have learned in past couple of years. So, uh, if that, okay, just just a few seconds, guys. A couple of folks are having audio problem. So, yeah just to share the knowledge what I have gained in last eight years and if that can help you somehow in shaping your career in any way or being more secure in your day-to-day -day life. So that's what I'm trying to do since we all are sitting at home right now and we are just like spending a lot of time on watching videos or just doing some other work like just checking out what's WhatsApp all day or doing face Facebook all day. So I just wanted to just take one hour out of that life, out of my work life, like I work nine to five. And then out of that time, I wanted to give some time back to the community if that helps anyone anyhow. So uh, that's why I'm sharing this knowledge. And I don't want this to be one way sessions. I don't want to speak for an hour. And I want this to be a, an interactive session where everyone gets a chance to speak and they can come up with their own questions or their suggestions, like uh, if they have any suggestions how to improve the session, if like if it's about poor audio quality, video quality, poor slideshows or anything, just come back to it. And when I'm asking you something, please do respond that I, so I know I'm not talking to a wall. I have some people sitting there. So I have spent a lot of time in preparing the content and arranging all the resources like I had uh, my laptop was down and I had to bring it back to the life and I had to prepare these slides. So I have spent a lot of time. So if you can give me some feedback, that would be helpful for me as well. All right, so <clears throat> uh, we have a couple of items, uh, how this will go. Throughout this week, we'll have a couple of sessions every day, one hour, and every day we will talk about different items. So this will not be in um, a certification um, sort of, uh, seminar like where I help you out for getting some certifications done. No, that's not what I want to do. I want you guys to know what is the challenge right now in front of us and how to solve it. So that will help you in two ways. One, identifying the problem in your personal life. Second, in your professional life, that makes you more um, competitive to have like your career goal set 
right in front of you. So some of you are from non technical background. Some of you might be from technical background. So I have kept the course content for today. The intro, this is just an introduction today. It's very generic. A lot of people might already know what I'm talking about and some of you might not know. So for them, it will be a completely a new um, information. So that's all. If you have any questions, any suggestions, please feel free to use the chat function and I'll try to respond to those questions after the end of the session. All right, so if you are not talking, please go on the mute. If you have anything to talk, then please unmute yourself and talk. All right, so now let's start about myself. So my name is Elias and I've been working with IT industry for like past eight years. I've been working with different companies in helping different customers secure their infrastructure. So over the years, I have worked in many different domains. I have worked with uh, desktop support. I have worked with networking, network security, cloud security, cyber security, data protection. I have explored almost every aspect of the security now. And right now I'm working as a senior manager of cloud security with Standard Chartered Bank. So that's, those are my credentials. So you guys know what I'm talking about. And if you have any questions, I'll you'll be having my email address. I have been sending you emails since morning about different feed survey forms and all. So you already have my email address and some of you might have my contact numbers as well. So feel free, uh, feel free to uh, just drop me a note whenever you have a question, whether it's a, it's a guidance you need or some generic questions about the course content or anything. And whenever I'm sending you a survey link, please fill those so I know like how many people are going to be on this session. If there is not enough audience, then uh, I may discontinue the sessions, but until that time, we'll continue going forward. All right, so uh, just to go back to the slide, I started working um, like with Sonic All, which which is a firewall company, and in 2012, I worked there for more than four and five, four and a half years. So there I used to work on network security appliances, email security appliances. These are the appliances which help an organization protect the environment. Like if any spam comes on an email or a virus comes through an email or. <clears throat> oh, one second, I think my screen share is not working. Okay, yeah, there you go. So yeah, so I used to help with network security appliance, email security appliances. We used to have all kind of customers like a small business, small medium business, large enterprises, and MNCs as well. Then I started working with a company called Sky High Networks, which is now acquired by McAfee. I used to work with there for cloud access security broker that's known as CASP. That's some leading technology into the security right now. So this cloud access security, it's a new edge of security which provides you security over the cloud. We'll talk about that in maybe later this, this week. But before that, we'll talk about the basics like what is network, what is network security, how to computer stock, and what is data protection, what is data security, different aspects of it. So we will not talk about the definitions here. Those are the, def if you are looking for definitions, you can go Google it out and you can summarize those. <clears throat> but what I want, I want you to have some practical knowledge which you will gain only after working with different kind of infrastructure. So that's what we will focus in this uh, training. All right, so introduction is done. Now, what are the topics which are which we are going to cover? That's one of the thing I'll explain in, in next slide, okay? Why we have this session, we already talked about it, to share the knowledge, if that helps you in any how. And a couple of folks on this meeting are my friends and all, all the old colleagues I have worked with. So we generally don't get much time to talk, to share the knowledge. We just, we spend time together, but we hardly talk about our professional lives. So this may help you guys and help me as well in understanding what we do in our different jobs. And this may help us in making a good network as well as in enhancing our skills and knowledge to move forward. All right, so some of you are like students. For them, it will be a completely new, ses new session and it will help them out in shaping their career, how they can move in, into their career in terms of security. If they wanna go further into the security domain, this will help them out. If you are a businessman, then don't worry, it will help you as well because 
some of you might be owning some website some of you might be using pen and paper somewhere or another you have some data and that data is critical if that get data gets into wrong hand it might cause you some business loss we will talk about it how it's an security is essential for a shopkeeper to a, a supermarket everyone needs to know. <clears throat> all right so if you are already a security practitioner working for some it firm then it will still help you out and or if you know more than me then definitely it will help me as well and we all can share knowledge with each other on this forum so commutative we will help everyone this group will help each other to grow further in their career and achieve something a better what we dream of as of now all right um so yep that's all about it and these are not motivational lectures these are purely technical lectures yeah all right so these are the topics we are going to cover we will be talking about networking network security data versus information what is data and when do you classify it as information what is data protection what is data loss prevention what is cloud computing and what is cloud security <laughs> <clears throat> so these are the points we will talk about all right so again the same thing what we will learn is what is networking why it is needed types of network how do different machines talk to each other so this is just about the networking just three points and probably we'll add more to these uh, sessions so uh, <clears throat> let's start from networking so for the people who are from non-technical background I will start from the basics there and then we will go into more technical details like on the packet level. How do you see what's what kind of uh, network it is, how the, the two machines are communicating. But before that, let's let's just go back into our school days. Let's see when we when we didn't know anything about the laptops, how how the things look to us at that moment. So <clears throat> we have two laptops or one mobile phone or one laptop to mobile phone or any different kind of machines. They uh, all are connected as of now today. Someone sends you a text message, you receive it, or you send a photo to someone on WhatsApp. We all are using internet in some way, how these machines are connected. A very basic principle, there are two type of connections. <clears throat> one is a wired connection, another one is a wireless connection. So wired connections are those ethernet cables some of you might still be uh, seeing those connections as like you if you have a router a wi-fi or broadband at your home a cable comes from the isp which connects to your broadband router and that's how you get the wi-fi signal right so that cable can also be connected to your laptop or your desktop or any other hardware so that's a wired connection earlier there were no wi-fi connections back in 90s and Every, everything was on on the wired connection these are called ethernet connections they are different type of cables so i don't want to go into that detail as of now we can talk about that later all right so uh, that's about the wired connection you can also connect two computers using a wire and ethernet cables they can talk locally but they won't be able to go to internet if there is no wi-fi you can assign ips manually from one machine and assign another IP address in the same range to another machine and they can talk to each other. Then there is a wireless connection. These are typically known as GPS or that's for, for the mobile phones, then Wi-Fi. And then there are other kind of uh, wireless networks as well. Like we create hotspot from our phone and connect to our laptops and all. So yeah, that's all. And network security. So this is where the security comes in picture and things get ugly here. So when you have a lot of machines connected to internet, which are talking to each other and they are accessing internet, most, mostly in, in a home or when you are sitting in, inside a corporate network, you access different websites. You don't know what kind of websites you are accessing. If there's any malicious tool going to be infecting your machine, it can be a crypto locker or it can be malware or a virus or a worm, we don't know. Right. So that's where the network security comes in picture. The network security is provided by the network security appliances, also known as unified threat management. So um, the short form for unified threat management is UTM. And then there is email security um, that's specifically for the email. 
since now the things are changing these network security appliances they are moving to cloud as well and the net email security devices are moving to cloud as well so we'll talk about that as well how these tra traditional inf security infrastructure have been moving to cloud and how the company is still uh, make their uh, on premise as well as cloud infrastructure secure using these appliances so um, the network security these firewall devices what it helps any computer which is going to internet goes to these network security appliances and then there there a lot of inspection happens what kind of content is being downloaded what kind of website you are accessing and based on that the web pages get rendered and the information gets downloaded to your machine so if there's anything malicious then these devices protect your computer it stops the download there itself I'm not sharing any slides on these topics as of now. We'll do that tomorrow. We'll start from network and network security tomorrow. And going forward today, I just want it to be very basic. So you guys are aware of the technology. You can go Google the information and then we can talk about it more. If you have any questions, then please ping on the chat. Okay. So next comes data versus information. So in computers or in in a in a normal life, the where the basic starts, we all have some sort of data with us. So if it's a traditional shopkeeper, he maintains a ledger, a notebook where he writes some information like what he purchased, how many items he sold, at what cost he purchased, and at what cost he sold it, and how much profit he made. That's a shopkeeper without using a laptop or a computer. He uses a pen and paper. When you go to go to uh, superstores or the big malls, what they do, they have the billing system computers, and they ask you your phone number, and then they generate the bill based on the items you purchased. And on the back end, they also do the entry of the items they purchased from the wholesaler. So at the end of the month, they can calculate how much they made. And on the other hand, they have the customer information, so they can reach out to you for the promotional activities and all, right? So if you look at the traditional information that each and every letter is known as bits and when you construct that those letters into a word that that's called a byte okay so when you construct all those words into a single sentence that's the data and when you arrange a lot of data together that becomes an information so if i just say elias that doesn't you don't you won't know what i mean until i say my name is elias so now this is a data and when i give you another three more sentences sentences that becomes an information so if a data or the bits get stolen that's not going to be a big problem for us because that's not something um, which we should be worried about because that data is useless to anyone but when an information gets hacked or leaked that's where the problem comes so uh, a typical example is like right now we get a lot of calls these spam calls um, which are trying to sell you credit card numbers uh, try, uh, trying to sell you credit cards right and we also get those scam calls where they are trying to get our debit card credit card information somehow just giving you some bogus offer information and all and then they ask you for your 16 digit credit card numbers and all did you ever think that how these people got your information why do they know how how do they know know your name your phone numbers etc so there are two ways for them to get this information either somebody hacked this information by themselves and then they are using this information for their per personal gain second now a lot of companies when we go to online forums they ask for our first name last name email address contact numbers and when they have a good database they sell it to different companies so one of the company uh, which is like policy bazaar with bank bazaar where you can go and compare your life insurance policies and all they are one of the biggest sellers of these data your personally identifiable information they sell your the phone numbers to these scammers and these spammers and then they these spammers they feed this information to their system and that's how you get automated calls so if this information should be protected at any cost you should not be sharing this information unless absolutely necessary and that's where the problem starts and these companies these websites they don't allow you to browse their content until you give them this information right so um, now the whole point is should you be visiting these sites or no no you should not be giving these sites until unless there is absolutely no other way 
and if a company if it's a bank or if it's some other company which collects your information it's their responsibility to protect that information your personal information should not be shared so now um, the european com Euro european countries or the us they have started coming up with the laws to protect this information now in europe we have eu gdpr so this is a law where every company who is collecting the information has to protect this information. This information should not be leaked. And if you identify a company who has leaked your information, you can sue them and then they are liable to pay you fines. Okay, and that fine goes into millions. So now companies, they have a special devices, a special infrastructure to make sure the information which they collect about their, their customers that cannot be leaked. Or if, if it anyhow it get, gets leaked, those are encrypted information so somebody can't read it so that's the basics about uh, the data protection so data protection comes in picture when you have such information which is critical so another example uh, if you are a bank the bank has a lot of information the customer's phone number their first name last number last name email address their pan numbers Aadhaar card numbers if it's us customer social security number right there are different type of data to identify a customer. And then these, in, these are the bank, they have their banking records as well. So what is your bank account number? What is your UPI ID? What is your credit card number? All these informations are there somewhere stored. There are different ways to store this information. Some of these informations are stored in plain text. Some of these are stored in encrypted text. And some of these are stored in a volatile memory where it just gets um, stored and gets erased immediately. So the companies that take measures to protect this data, but it's still there. Uh, some data keeps on leaking, and then the companies end up paying billions of dollars to for for the fine to these compliance and regulatory firms. And there are regulatory firms and regulatory compliance requirements in each and every country, which every company has to adhere. So it's one one of the example I gave you is EU GDPR. Another example will be PCI DSS. So if it's a bank, they have to adhere to PCI DSS. Then there's something called MAS. So there are a lot of security standards every company has to maintain. And how do they do it? They implement data loss prevention capabilities in their environment. Now this is another technology which we will talk about. The data loss prevention is um, <clears throat> the, this is a uh, so, sort of you can set up policies you can set up a different sort of rules like what to do with each kind of information so for example as i give or gave you an example first name last name email address if such kind of information is there you are supposed to tokenize it so tokenization means you just replace the letters with different randomized characters so if somebody gets this information it's useless to them and if it's some credit card number or something which they cannot tokenize, then it should be encrypted. And then there can be different en en encryption algorithms for that. So these, uh, there are different tools. These are called DLP tools, which help you in, in setting up DLP controls. So what you do, a classic DLP rule will look like something something like this. It will say, um, I'll, I'll just open Notepad and I'll, I'll show that to you here. Give me a second. Okay. Okay. So it will say if keyword. Okay. So something like that. Something like this. So credit card number. And then it can have another condition. So these are the conditions. If conditions all right so you'll set up something like this if a credit uh, keyword credit card number then there can be an identifier which says uh, credit uh, card number okay then what to do then basically simply let's take an example delete the data okay so this is one of the classic example where if the condition is if it's a credit card number right that's a keyword so i can say 
if it's a um, so what I'll say if it's a credit card number if somebody writes on a notepad credit card number this is a text and then next to it you write your 16 digit credit card or debit card number then there's something called a LUN algorithm this algorithm helps identify if the 16 digit numbers are really a credit card number or some just some random numbers if these two conditions match then the tool can delete the data this is a very basic simple uh, policy but then it gets a lot we can go into very detailed form of policies all right so this is how a dlp tool helps an organization in securing their infrastructure so uh, we will talk about these topics every day every day we will pick one topic and we'll talk about it so if any of you have any expertise on the, in this topic and want to contribute they can come and talk here or i'll try to bring some resources specialized on these different topics and talk here or some of the topics most of these topics i'll cover myself right So uh, guys, there are two more things to discuss here before I start that uh, I to start talking about it. I need your feedback. How is it going so far? Are you able to hear me any audio problems or how is the content you want? Is it helpful? You want more representational contents like some figures to ex to explain like whatever I've been talking about. I'm just it's just mostly audio. I can I'll try to be more up content i will try to provide more content like we can have more slide shows where i display with this some diagrams and all and some more text here so that's one feedback i already have but please speak up now give me how is it going so far would you be interested to attend these sessions going forward or that's all uh, it's a waste of time for you guys Hello. Yeah, Rajat. Yeah, hi, Elias. It's nice to uh, nice to hear you, man. It's a long time, and uh, the session yeah. was actually good. Actually, good. I was keen to learn about this, and uh, this is quite impressive. Uh, like you are the way you are teaching, and everything was so clear to me. And I now I can also uh, tell someone what are these topics and all. So I'll be looking forward. I'll join all those sessions. Whenever you are going to them, uh, please bring me. I'll be there. And thank, thank you, you very much for that. Thank you very much for giving your time, your, your precious time to us. Thank you very much, Elias. Thank you, Rajat, for uh, for the nice comments and thank you for joining the session. It's been a long time. So, guys who don't know Rajat, he is my classmate. We used to study together in college. School so, as well. Yeah, actually, school. <laughs> <laughs> And I then I have Imran as well, who is my classmate from my college. And oh. then a couple of folks are the folks I know personally. Then I have Sayed here. So yeah, it's nice that people are interested. Maybe I'm not a great tutor. Or maybe uh, even if this is 10% helpful to all of us, that will be nice. Okay, so yeah, now next two things are cloud computing and cloud security. So um, let, let's just go back where we were talking about networking. So before uh, we talk about cloud computing, let's, let's see uh, why do we need cloud computing and how, do, how, how these companies used to operate in past. So in past, there used to be like servers and there used to be a big server room where there used to be a lot of um, uh, rake space servers where you put a server hardware machines on your infrastructure that's actually also known as data center where you have huge data required the data coming in going out you have huge power supply to handle the that load the power requirement of all these servers right and then you have a lot of cables going around from one point to another so this is how a typically a data center used to look used to look like and not even just a data center if you just go to a lab a very basic five computer lab in, in a company in a security firm you'll see a lot of cables lying around here and, and it's a very messy infrastructure 
right if you just unintentionally re remove one cable then you don't know the entire lab or entire network may go down so there were a lot of challenges one of the challenge was finding a big infrastructure a physical location you have to lease a location a, a place where you can build a data center and then you have to get those power lines very big power lines that go from the grid to handle your power requirement then you need to buy all the physical devices and then you need somebody who can connect all these devices through a cable right and then once these are connected then you're um, you need an internet connection and that again needs to be a very heavy internet connection so after all of these things once you put all these pieces together you have your data center but then the problem comes uh, then there another problem comes up which is like man manpower you need resources who keeps checking those cables somebody check checks on the power right somebody checks the internet connection you need to have an, another alternate backup internet connection backup power supply right you need to have multiple data centers so if one data center is down another one keeps operational right and then um, suddenly if if there is a sudden requirement one of the server goes down you need to another you need another server right so for that you need another backup server in place so basically what you need you need a primary data center and then you need a disaster recovery data center where you have the exact same replica replica of the primary data center so if primary goes down your backup data center takes place and it just makes you operational now there used to be another problem so what if sudden requirements come up of having new more resources so for example you had one primary data center secondary data center the servers in primary are held healthy they all are working fine you don't need more resources from the health perspective but what if there is something which spiked the user uh, connections on your servers so for example if flipkart is running big billion sale right flipkart amazon they are they run big billion sale usually throughout the year their connections are very less and on these five or six days when they run these sales their internet connection requirement that the users which come to their website that just drastically increases so if we take an example these are the real numbers um, if if I, if we compare so if if they used to have 1000 users hitting on their website at any point of time from one location on big billion days it goes to 10 lakh or 1 crore users hitting at the same point of time so now those old, old servers will not be able to handle that load instantly right and you can't buy new servers to handle this load just for the five days and then keep paying the cost of these servers for the rest of the year right because you have to pay for the more internet bandwidth more cpu more power more hardwares right for throughout the year and what it was worth just five days in a year so that, that used to be a challenge then uh, came the companies which used to provide the cloud resources so what they do you don't need a data center you will have a virtual data center in the cloud so amazon is one of the uh, is provider amazon web services where you can just create your entire data center into uh, virtually so what the backend infrastructure will be handled by the amazon you go to their portal you create your servers the entire data center how you used to create in the traditional days then you set up some policies you say if the cpu usage goes more than 20 percent or 30 percent spin 10 more servers or if it goes more than uh, if these 10 servers go out of uh, resources due to more user requests coming in you spin up another 100 servers so when the big billion sale comes up these policies are in place there is no actually um, initially let's say if there were 10 servers to handle the load at the 12 o'clock when we all started browsing the website of flipkart amazon then this the, the system automatically knows that the, their cpu utilization have been going up more than 50 percent now it's the time to spin up more servers so immediately the policy kicks in it creates 10 more servers and then when these 10 servers go out of space or out of disk space or memory or cpu then they know that now that now is the time to spin up 100 more servers so rapidly instantly within 10 seconds within 20 seconds right this they get new servers immediately there's no delay or worst case scenario 30 seconds in 30 seconds you will have hundreds of the new servers online which are ready to take your load 
So you don't need somebody who is going to go, go, going to go to the market to buy new servers, put them in the data center, connect the cables, and talk to internet provider to get more bandwidth. Everything is done automatically. These servers are up. They are ready to handle your load. So now the big billion sale is going on. The CPU may go high at some peak time. Let's say it more it, in, in the afternoon, more people will be hitting to the server. So the users are peak. And then in the night, the users are dropped, right? So again, there's another policy which says if the CPU users goes down, then 50%, then delete these additional servers we created. And then when it goes further down for the remaining servers as well, then delete another 10 servers. So in then you will have just a primary service. And this keeps on, keeps on happening on a real time basis. Every minute the system checks this thing. So your cloud resources, they keep on spinning, they keep on deleting by the automatic uh, uh, system. These are known as resource pooling. So there are different characteristics about the cloud. These are the very basic reasons why we need cloud. And in technical terms, there is like cloud for these are the characteristics, elasticity, scalability, metered billing. So these are the couple of terms we use in the in, in the cloud. And then there are different type of cloud service provider. This one example I gave you, it's known as infrastructure as a service. So wherever you see a word called as a service, that means it's something related to a cloud. So if it's infrastructure as a service, it means somebody is giving you the data center as a service, right? And then there comes software as a service where somebody gives you software as a service means you don't need a computer to install a software, right? Then you have a software virtually somewhere, you just access that through your browser. So an example of that, um, um, like Facebook, Right, so that's a, that can uh, similarly similar to Facebook, we have Salesforce. If you uh, if you ever use Salesforce in your companies, that's software as a service. And then there comes the Office 365, Microsoft Office 365, and then comes Dropbox, Box, OneDrive, Google Drive. These are software as a service. So you don't need to install a software. The, the infrastructure is already in the back end. And how you may need to use the software uh, to access certain services, but you can also access through browser. So this, that's a software as a service. Then there comes a platform as a service. So the coders who used to code um, earlier, they used to have their own machines, their platforms, Jenkins, Kubernetes, and all these things came in picture. And now the coders, they can, can run their Java program, their Python program, their Perl programs directly into the containers on the cloud. So again, it's the same story as the data center. They don't need huge workload to handle their requirements. These all can be done in the cloud and in a very secured manner and in a very safe manner so the data doesn't get lost. There are different type of the requirements where the cloud comes in picture. So very basic, this is about the cloud. We can go more detail into these things. Okay, so now it comes the cloud security. So cloud security is something which provides security on top of the solution IS, PaaS, and SaaS. So for example, you have your data center hosted in AWS as we explained earlier, right? And now suddenly, let's say um, somebody is trying to hack your one of your machine, one of your server, is open to remote desktop connections. We all, uh, I think we all know what is an RDP connection. So RDP is something where you can take a remote of one machine from another machine. Now, traditionally when these servers used to be on network, the, this risk was low because this can only be accessed from the local network if you have proper firewall policies in place. But when it goes to the cloud, there are less chance, there are very more chances of your administrator making a mistake of opening a port and leaving it open. So to make sure there are no security loopholes, you need a security over the cloud, which is also known as cloud security, right? And <clears throat> that's one of the um, infrastructure as a, as a service that this is one of the service you provide on the, on the cloud security. This is known as configuration audit. You do the config, you do the check, you check the configuration of each, in, each and every machine automatically. If there's any problem, you just go back and remediate those problems. And then comes the security for the SaaS solution. We were talking about SAS, right? Software as a service, that these are called a SaaS solution. So for the SaaS solution, let's say you are using OneDrive, Google Drive, right? And what information we store, like if, if it's a end user, think about it. 
i what what is the data on my one on google drive i'll tell you i have my driving license i have my credit card or de debit card photos there i have my personal photos my android phone just keeps on uploading all my photos to the google photos that keeps on taking backup right so almost everything about me is there on on this google drive now if somebody gets into it they can see my personal life as well as they can see my uh, my financial information so if this information gets into the wrong hands i'm doomed right i may have a lot of losses i may have reputational loss i may have financial loss right or if it's something uh, about in, in about some other company i stored in my one drive then there can be the other companies can come or sue me right so um now talk, now let's think from the organization perspective so when it's a, when it's an organization what kind of uh, how who access this service so usually in, in the companies they use one drive google drive to store their data so the users they don't have to to store the data locally or sometimes what happens they give they keep uh, keep this as a backup as well so whatever you store on your laptop it gets back backed up to your one drive and google drive so if anything happens to your laptop in future it just downloads all the data from the google drive one drive so that's from the backup perspective so if you lose your laptop you don't lose your data so now what information employee might be storing is like they might be storing the customer information as we were talking about earlier right and they might be storing some trade information if it's a sales guy he might be doing some sales activity with other companies so there might be a lot of trade information if this data gets leaked then there is a problem so to secure that you have um, again the casb or a cloud dlp solution in place right so dlp is nothing data loss prevention to make sure that your this information doesn't get hacked so across all different platform there is a common there are common tools or different tools so for for saving the data on like for securing the data on saas solution there is called dlp right cloud dlp then securing the data on uh, which is is service like making sure your systems are not accessible from outside there is like <coughs> cspm that's called cloud security posture management these are different set of tools right and then you have um, container security which comes for the coders and all so these are different three or four type of security solution which come as separate bundles and now there has been another technology called as cloud access security broker so cloud access security broker actually combines all these solution into one and presently present it as a suite so you look at this suite and this give, gives you all these three protection it can secure your computers in the cloud it can secure saas and pass solution it can also do the dlp work so that's about the cloud security so we'll we'll go more into more details how each thing work what are the different components into our upcoming sessions so yep that's all for today any questions yeah elias what about aws do they have any hardware like lab or something how they are storing our data yeah so the aws they have their own back end data centers we these data center they have like they have zones and then they have these. so and then they have pop so these are three different terminologies they use <clears throat> so if we take an example in india right india is a region okay in india um india is not actually a region india is a country okay uh, and then in india we have four regions north india south india east india west india so they have four different regions they have divided the india into four parts four different regions and in each region they may be having four five six seven ten um zones okay and each zone will have at least one data center okay so in india itself they will be having hundreds of the data center spread across the india and each data center is bigger than the individual data center which company used to have so for example if i being a small company i used to have a data center where i used to have 100 servers now aws will have a server into a centralized location which will serve all the customers right and <clears throat> that data center will be a very will be very big compared to the my my data center so they they can host up to like millions of machines and they don't actually uh, so every server you request 
right? They don't actually buy a new physical server for you. They use a technology called virtualization. So in virtualization, what happens? Let's say um, if you look at your hard disk, right? In 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 our traditional old days, we used to partition our hard disk so we can create four partitions: one for the C drive, one for the D drive, right? And we store different kind of data onto different. So similarly, there comes a virtualization where you um, you can install uh, multiple um, servers on a single hardware. For example, we used to use VMware on on our local machine to install a virtual operating system, right? So similarly, there are hardwares dedicated for this work where they spin up hundreds of the server on single hardware, and then they they have hundreds of these hardwares in their data center. So whenever you request a server, it may be spinning up on one of these hardwares, and then they have a lot of technologies in place, lot of uh, security measures in place, so your data doesn't interfere with another customer's data because you all are in the cloud. If your data gets um, messed, uh, if your data gets mixed with somebody else, there are chances that you might be looking at somebody else's data. So they have multi-tenancy and um, <coughs> multi-tenancy in place. So that means your data in a different tenant and somebody else's data in a different tenant. That's how they achieve the security as well. So there is a data center, of course, but now earlier 100 different customer used to have their 100 different data centers. Now they all can have one single data center. And if it's a startup, if it's a small company, they don't have to spend on the infrastructure. They can just buy everything from the AWS and they can have their infrastructure ready in five, 10 minutes itself. So that's a flexibility. And now if we look at our current situation, now that there is a lockdown all over the world, right? Now, in such scenario, the cloud comes very handy. If you need to share some screen, right? Right. I, I'm, I'm just sharing my screen. I'm giving you the content without meeting you guys. So that's possible through the cloud. And then if a company wants to start their business now, right? They can. They don't even, even need to step out of their door. They can just create their own infrastructure immediately on the AWS. They can create their website in few clicks, right? And in a couple of hours, their entire business will be online. So that's how it is. And did that answer your question, uh, Rajat? Yeah, yeah, I understood. It's clear. Okay. Okay, I see uh, Sudhakar on the line. So Sudhakar, you have been on mute since beginning. Please unmute yourself and speak up. If you don't like the session, you can also give your suggestions as well. I won't mind, but please speak up. All right. So um, anybody else, Imran, you are good with the session. Any questions? Okay. Yeah. Hello. Uh, no. Yes, 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 yes. Iman, you're trying to say something? No, no. Thank you. Okay. So, yeah, guys, that's all from my end today. And I like really had very little time to prepare today. I had my office, and then I had just one or two hours to prepare this kind of content. Then I was preparing other resources like this go to meeting and all. Um, so I could not prepare much of the slides, but tomorrow I will try to get more of the visual content so it makes it easy for the discussion. And please make it interactive. And we feel like we are sitting in a class. It should not be like somebody is giving a webinar where every participant is on mute. That way I won't know if I'm really talking to somebody or everybody is disconnected and left their laptops to make me feel good that somebody is there on this session. Uh, just to reduce our noise, that's why we are on mute. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. Okay, finally, yes, thank you. Okay, yeah, thank you guys for your time. I hopefully see you all tomorrow in the evening. The link will for the session will be same as today. So, fine, yes. Thank you. Thank you guys, bye.